In this lecture, we're going to look at a concept known as capacitance. Now, before we talk about capacitors and how they function and why they're important, let's recall what a battery is. Now, from chemistry, a battery is simply an electrochemical cell in which an oxidation reduction confer converts or transforms chemical energy into electrical work. And this electrical work can be used to power devices such as a calculator or a motor or a light bulb. Now, let's look at the layout of an electrochemical cell. Recall that electrochemical cells are composed of two half cells. Half cell number one, the anode, and half cell number two, the cathode. Now, within our half cell number one, the anode, we have an electrode that loses electrons. And these electrons travel from this electrode to this electrode. So they travel from the anode, the negative charged half cell, to our cathode, the positively charged half cell. So, because of our convention, we know that if our electrons travel from our anode to our cathode, that means our current must travel in the opposite direction. Now, this salt bridge connects this guy and this guy, and what it does is it essentially closes our circuit, creating a closed circuit system. Now, what allows our electrons travel from this side to this side? Well, there is an electrochemical force, which is not really a force, but a voltage. So, an electric potential between this anode and this cathode allows our electrons to travel from this side to this side. So, as long as there is a difference in voltage between this cell and this cell, our electrons will continue to flow. The second our voltage equalizes and our change in voltage goes to zero, so our voltage in this half cell and this half cell are the same, at that point our electrons will stop moving. Now, a battery is essentially this exact thing. This is found inside a battery. Now, the anode and the cathode are labeled. If you ever pick up a battery, a AA, AAA, or a D battery, you'll see that our anode and cathode are labeled. So, this side will be our positive side. There's a plus on that side, and that must mean it's our cathode. This side is our anode, and that's because there's a negative, so negative sign on that side. Now, the reason there's a negative sign on this side are, is because electrons are lost, and so our electrons will travel <coughs> from our negative side to our positive side. So, now suppose we take a wire and we connect one end to this negative side to our anode and a second end to our cathode or this side. And on top of that wire we place say a light bulb. So <coughs> let's look <coughs> so let's examine the following illustration. Now we have our uh, battery and we've incorporated it into a closed circuit on top of which we have a light bulb. So what will happen as soon as we connect the battery? What will happen is electrons will begin to flow from our negative side, our anode, to our positive side, our cathode. And they will travel in this cyclical manner. And as soon as they travel through our battery, through our light bulb, our light bulb will light up. And that's because in this battery, there is an electric potential. There is a voltage or a voltage difference. And this voltage difference pushes our electrons to flow from our anode to our cathode. And this creates electrical work in the form of moving electrons. And so when electrons move from this side to this side, through our light bulb, our light bulb will light up. Now eventually, of course, our light bulb will get dimmer and dimmer until eventually it stops uh, lighting. It's not going to light. And at that point, what that basically means is that our electric difference or electric potential difference or voltage difference between the anode and the cathode is exactly zero. So electrons will no longer flow when our electromotive force goes to zero. And at that point we can say our battery is depleted. Now let's look at a second situation. Now in this situation, suppose we replace this light bulb with a parallel plate capacitor. So what this is, is it's essentially same sized plates 
some distance d between so they're not touching and what's separating them is air so what will happen now as soon as we connect our battery electrons will begin to flow so electrons will travel from this side because oxidation is taking place in our anode and electrons in this side of the wire will travel to this side because reduction is taking place in our cathode so notice what the result is electrons will travel to this side and when we get to this parallel plate capacitor the electrons will begin to gather on the surface of our uh, parallel plate likewise electrons on this plate will leave our uh, parallel plate and these electrons will travel to our cathode our positively charged half cell this guy so electrons travel from this end to our cathode so they travel from this end to our cathode in our electrochemical cell picture here now eventually what will happen is the following we're going to get a charged plate so this side will have a negative charge and this side will have a positive charge and the voltage difference between this side and this side will be exactly the same as the voltage difference in our battery. So if say we're using a AA battery that has a voltage of 1.5 volts, that means our, our parallel plate capacitor will have a voltage of 1.5 volts. Now, the amount of positive charge on this side is exactly the same in quantity of the amount of negative charge on this side. The only difference is on this side we have a plus charge and on this side we have a negative charge. And now because we have plus and minus, that means there will be an electrical field. And because these two guys are exactly the same, have the same amount of charge, our electric field will be constant. So, once again, in case two, the two parallel plates will collect charge, which will create an electric field that will be constant. This, in turn, will produce an electromotive force or a voltage equal to the battery voltage or the battery's electromotive force. Now once again, let's make sure we understand the following important point. When we have a circuit that has a parallel plate capacitor in that circuit and we incorporate a 1.5 volt battery into our circuit, the following will occur. Electrons will begin to travel from the anode, the negative end, because oxidation has taken place in that half cell on this side of our battery. And so electrons will be released and they will travel onto this parallel plate capacitor. Likewise, on the cathode side of our battery, on the cathode side of our electrochemical cell, we're going to have electrons coming in. So electrons will be pulled in to the cathode from this parallel plate capacitor. So this parallel plate will develop or accumulate a net positive charge while this side will accumulate a net negative charge. The result will be separation of charge. And this separation of charge will create an electric field. And remember, whenever we take the electric field and multiply it by the distance between the charges, we get our voltage difference. So our electric potential of our field can be found by taking our field, multiplying by our distance between the charges, and we get our voltage. That's how you find voltage. So this voltage difference will cause our electrons to move. In other words, let's look at the second picture. Now, suppose we take out our battery after this parallel plate capacitor has been fully charged. We take our battery and we quickly replace it with a resistor. Suppose we replace it with a light bulb. What will happen is the following. The second when we remove this battery, electrons will begin to flow in this direction, going this way. Why? Well, because electrons flow from a higher electric potential to a lower electric potential or from a higher voltage to a lower voltage in the same way that a battery drops 
from a higher gravitational potential to a lower gravitational potential, where here is the higher gravitational potential and here is the lower gravitational potential. In the same way, electrons will move from a higher electric potential to a lower electric potential. So up on this plate is the low is the higher electric potential and so the electrons will travel from the negative side to our positive side and this movement of electrons due to a difference in electric potential a difference in voltage will create electric work electrical work in other words when our electrons travel from this side to this side they will create electric work in the form of moving electrons and this means this electric work can be converted to thermal work and this thermal work will light our light bulb will make it glow now eventually of course when this capacitor becomes fully uncharged when the f when the net charge is zero between these two plates what happens is electrons will stop moving because there's no longer anything pushing the electrons there's no difference in voltage that's pushing our electrons to move and so electrons will stop flowing and that means our light bulb will stop glowing so once again separation of charge creates a net electric field between the two plates and this in turn creates a difference in voltage now this difference in voltage propels our electrons to move from the higher voltage to the lower voltage and this move <coughs> and this movement of electron creates useful work creates electrical work which then can be converted or transformed into thermal work or thermal energy or into mechanical work for example when powering a motor if we replace this light bulb with a motor the same result will happen this motor will be powered by these capacitors by these parallel plates now in conclusion capacitors can store charge on their plates and this can be used at a later time to do useful work so we define capacitance as the ability of these plates of these three-dimensional plates to store charge remember this is a two-dimensional picture but really our plates are in three dimensions they have width they have height and they have a length now let's jump to the formula whenever we want to find the capacitance we have to use the following formula Q over V Q is the charge and V is the electric difference or electric potential difference or the voltage now in other words we can combine or we can define our capacitance as the charge created between these two plates divided by the unit voltage created or the difference in voltage created between our plates and that's capacitance so it has the units of coulombs divided by volts so Q over V are the units now let's jump to part D the electric field created by parallel plate capacitors can be found using the following formula so our electric field depends on the following things it depends on something called K which is the dielectric constant we'll talk about that when we talk about dielectrics so we'll talk about it in a future lecture Q is the charge developed on our plates A is the area of the parallel plate so the area of our plate in terms of length times height and E or epsilon naught comes from the K comes from Coulomb's law and we'll look at the relationship between K and this epsilon naught when we talk about dielectrics so this is the formula for the electric field between two parallel plates now suppose I want to find a different formula for capacitance in terms of these guys in terms of Q A and E naught what will happen is the following I can take this formula and I can plug in my voltage so what is voltage voltage is simply electric field times distance so I take this voltage and I plug into our V the bottom so I get Q over ED is equal to C right because C is Q over V equals Q stays the same and E over D we got from this formula and now we take our electric field and we plug it in for our E and we get the following thing capacitance of two parallel plates is 
given by k, the dielectric constant, times a, our area of plate, times epsilon naught, divided by our distance between them. So we see that capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor increases, increases if our dielectric constant increases, and we'll talk about why we're going to talk about uh, dielectric constants. If our area increases, our C will also increase, and that's because if there is more area, that means there is more space to store our charge. And so if area increases, our charge uh, or amount of charge stored also increases. Our Q top increases. And we see that if our constant that comes from our Coulomb's constant increases, our capacitance also increases. And we see that if our D increases, because C and D are inversely proportional, if D increases, C must decrease. Now, let's talk about energy. Remember, we said that capacitors can store charge on their plates, and this can be used at a later time to do useful work. And we saw examples with light bulbs and motors. So let's see how much energy can be stored we're talking about capacitors. So once again, separation of charge creates an electrical field. This electric field in turn creates a change in voltage. And this change in voltage propels the electrons to move from a higher potential to a lower potential in the same way that any mass moves from a higher gravitational potential to a lower gravitational potential. Now this movement of electrons creates electrical work. But how much electrical work is created? Well, to examine this idea, let's look at the following formula. Q equals CV. Now, Q equals CV is very similar to the equation of a line, right? Because the equation of a line is Y equals MX plus B. Now, this is almost the same, except we're missing our Y-intercept. We're missing our B. That means our B must be zero. So our line intersects at the origin, so 0, 0, where our Q is our Y and our V, the voltage is our X, and M is our slope. So if we graph Q on the Y axis and voltage on the X axis, because voltage is the X value, we get a slope, a linear slope line. And that means that our slope must be our capacitance, C. So, if we find the area under our current, we will get the amount of work or amount of energy transformed or stored in our capacitor. Notice that this curve is very simple. It's a straight line. So to find the area, we simply realize that this is a triangle. So we have to use the formula 1 half times base times height. Well, height in this case is our charge. Our x in this case, or base, is simply the amount of voltage. And if we multiply that by a half, we get our energy. So our energy or work uh, that's stored in a capacitor is given by one half times Q times V. Now from this equation, we can get two more equations, this guy and this guy, by simply taking our Q and plug it into the Q here. So instead of Q, we get CV times V. So we get C times V squared. Likewise, we can represent our V in terms of Q divided by C, plug that into our V, and we get Q squared over C times 1 half. So if we remember this formula and we remember this relationship, we can get this formula and this formula. But in either case, these guys give us the amount of energy stored in our capacitor.